Um, so the the way this came to be, it started it started quite a while ago. My my dad brought home one day. He found this old squire. I think it's an affinity or a bullet or something like that. And he brought it home, and it was left-handed. And he just wanted a project guitar to work on. And so um, it, we, we ended up like relicking it and he did some little mods to it and then I painted it and I ended up playing this guitar for quite a while. Um, and I really fell in love with it and to the point where I was like, actually I really want, you know, the real version. Um, and so for my 24th birthday I bought a, a Japanese 67 reissue of Finished Rap. Um, you know, to kind of get that Jimi Hendrix thing and to, I guess, like I just said, get the real version of what, what I was playing before. Um, and so that became the basis of Sonny. The, the first thing that I did was um, I painted it. Jan yeah, kept teasing me, he was like, you're going to paint it? I was like, no, I'm not, I'm going to have this one clean. But it was Sunburst, and I always thought Sunburst was a little bit boring. And so I ended up painting it, and um, it had this big peace symbol there. And I always thought it looked a bit dodgy, so then I replaced it and it had like this giant sunshine to it. But that guitar was kind of heavy, and the pickups, the pickups weren't really my taste, um, but, but I, I really liked the neck. The one thing I really wanted was like this maple cap, late 60s style um, CBS neck. And so um, Andy told me about a friend of ours, Chris, who just started this guitar company and they built me, or he built me this body. Um, and then this, this gentleman over in North London called Fern, he sprayed it and it was, it was gold over white. I kind of wanted like this, this homage to Jimmy, but it also, I also wanted it to feel like my own thing. So I was like, well, if it's gold over white, I was like, you know, it's kind of like a little nod to the Woodstock Strat and that kind of thing, but it's, it's not a replica, it's, you know, it's not a clone. And so I was playing for that for a while. And then we had the pleasure to get um, what is allegedly the, the Monterey Strat in. And I mean, whatever that guitar is, it sounds unreal. And I went and played this after playing that, and I was like, this ain't cutting the mustard. So um, uh, I hit up Bare Knuckle, and I was like, look, what, what's going to kind of get me this kind of sound? And I described what I wanted. And they, uh, they suggested they've got these 63 veneer board, I think they're pattern set or something. I'm sorry if I'm screwing the name up, but it's something like that. And um, I had those in it for a while, and they sounded amazing. Um, and then what changed next? And then I, I ended up changing the, the saddles. I think if I'm honest, I changed them because I was bored. I, no, <laughs> I remember I, when it came, that was one of the things that wasn't original to the guitar. I had these really weird, like modern saddles on and I thought they were nasty. I wanted like the, the original Fender pattern pending saddles. And so there's this company called True Vintage and they make great saddles. And so I got those. And then they're the same as the springs. So, um, Back in the day, you know, a lot of people they would use five strings in their sp strings, springs in their in their strats. But if you try to do that with modern springs, it's like it's just going to snap whammy bars constantly. A friend of ours, Reese, he he's a big Stevie Ray Vaughan fan, and he was telling me I think he's gone through four whammy bars playing with five springs. And so I, I was speaking to another friend of mine, Stan, and he was like, no, like they had different tension back in the day. If you put five modern springs on, it's not the same as what they had. So again, he recommended me, this, recommended me this company, and that's what they are. Um, we just changed the tuners because the old ones were early '90s ones, and they were totally worn out. Um, oh, three-way switch now. And then um, I, I kept staring at it, and I was like, it could be cooler. And so Jan got a fiber painted by a friend of ours, Tom, and it was like the job was just sublime. It was like, you know, I, I would say a bit. Than I think. He, he smashed it, like it looked great and I kind of got jealous and I was, the whole time I was like I kind of want my guitar to be black like ultimately I thought, thought it would look really sick black um, and so he sprayed it and I was obsessed with it and that's what we got now but you know you can kind of see the layers and you've got this gumball thing going on this sticker, it, it always makes me smile um, this is from Brandy Melville which is like the tweeniest like girl shop ever like they just sell white crop tops for like 15 year old girls from California and my girlfriend she gave me this sticker and I like the fact that it was a smiley face and I like the fact that I had like this rock and roll homage to one of my heroes but I had like this twin sticker on it which made me think of like um, how sm Smells Like Teen Spirit was actually like a really girly like tweeny perfume and then Kurt wrote a song about it so it, was, it kind of felt the same thing to me um, I added the transfer on the top 
because when it came on left-handed guitars back in the day, they didn't have reverse transfers, so it would just have the logo. Um, we took one of the we I took one of the string trees out and we plugged the hole. Um, and and so I kept my own transfers, and the first one fell off because I touched it like a donut. Um, and so I recently replaced it, but then. Um, uh, I, 68 is my favorite era for, for, the, for, the, for the strap, um, and it came with a 67 logo, which is really anal, but I wanted it black instead of the gold color, but I, I kept finding them and they wouldn't fit, so I ended up, if you look, it's quite crude. I just sharpied it in the end, I was like, screw this, and I sat there on the sofa and sharpied my logo in. <laughs> Productive! <laughs> now I can't look secrets! Yeah, oh, I straightened the whammy bar a little bit as well. Yeah, like a day, though, I've had, I've been through quite a lot of them. I've tried shorter ones, I've tried longer ones, and then this is yeah, it's it's a little bit so it's kind of straight. Um, I don't know if there's any other quirks. People will always ask how the action is. So there you go. It's kind of low, but it's got the traditional seven and a quarter radius, so it's not the slinkiest thing in the world. But it is tuned out at your flat, so I think it plays nice. Oh, and uh, the last thing. Not that we condone smoking, but like a lot of old school blues players would leave cigarettes in their guitar and they used to leave like these quite hey, iconic. Old blues, old bluesy smokers, uh, That's exactly what happened. Yeah, no, I just kept nicking cigarettes off my bass player and leaving them in there um, until it kind of got a little bit of finger in them. But then, uh, I'll be honest, like it absolutely stank, like it just smelled horrible. It, it smelled like an old pub and not in a nice way. So I ended up spraying it with this perfume. So now it smells like Tom Ford. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.